I got rejected from 47 companies before I landed my first internship. It wasn't my skills holding me back, it was my strategy. Once I figured that out, everything changed. I got internship offers from Amazon, Microsoft, IBM, and Morgan Stanley. This is exactly what I did differently and trust me, no one teaches you this in college. Hi friends, I'm Maddie. I'm a senior software engineer working in big tech. Today, I'm breaking down the exact strategy that took me from bombing technical interviews to landing offers at top tech companies. We're talking DSA fundamentals, the code patterns that actually matter, the resume format that got past ATS filters, and the projects that made recruiters reach out to me. Whether you're a freshman that just learned what a for loop is, or you're already grinding leak code, I'm gonna show you the roadmap I wish I had when I started. Let's dive in. I know the market is super tough right now and there's no sugarcoating it. Companies are getting thousands of applications within hours of posting. But here's what I learned. They're not looking for coding prodigies. They're looking for problem solvers who can learn fast and communicate well. When I started in university, I was surrounded by people who'd been coding since they were 10. Meanwhile, I'd barely written a line of Java. I felt completely behind. But that forced me to be strategic about how I approached the whole process. First, let's talk about when you're actually ready to apply. The short answer, while you're taking your data structures and algorithms course. I know that it might seem daunting to apply an interview before you take the entire class, but trust me, you'll only be able to improve if you take the plunge and start interviewing. For those starting from scratch, here's your learning path. Start with Intro to Algorithms, the CLRS textbook. Yes, it's dense. And yes, parts are boring, but chapters on sorting, searching, and basic data structures, those are your Bible. Focus especially on big O notation, arrays, linked lists, trees, and basic graph algorithms. I spend maybe six to eight weeks here if you're new and three to four weeks if you're reviewing. Next, supplement your uni curriculum with CS50 from Harvard if you have time. It's free, it's comprehensive, and it's actually engaging. Don't just watch the lectures though. Do every single problem set yourself. I spent about a month here when I was getting started. This will give you the foundations, for example, loops, conditionals, and basic problem solving. Another thing that really helped me was joining technical clubs on campus. For example, I was part of the machine intelligence community, Code for Good, where students were paired with local nonprofits to create solutions for them, and Code It, where we taught middle school girls in the Boston area how to code. Not only did these look good on my resume, they also gave me real coding experience and a network of people going through the same journey. Next, let's talk about LeetCode. For those of you who might not be familiar with it, LeetCode is an online platform offering thousands of programming challenges, primarily focused on algorithms and data structures to students and professionals to practice for internship and full-time job interviews. You have to pick and choose which problems to complete out of the more than 3.5 thousand LeetCode problems out there. Here's what I learned after solving over 400 of those. First, don't do random problems. Follow the LeetCode 75 list first, then LeetCode 150 if you have time. These problems cover the patterns that actually show up in interviews. I would say about 20% of these problem types make about 80% of the interview questions. Focus on that 20%. Here's my specific approach. For medium problems, spend a maximum of 30 minutes trying to solve it. If you're stuck, look at the solution. This isn't cheating, it's learning. Your brain follows patterns whether you realize it or not. The goal is to consciously recognize those patterns so you can apply them for later. Also, start with easy problems in each category to learn the fundamentals. I remember when I first tried tree problems, even the easy ones seem impossible. But after about five to 10 easy problems, I understood the basic patterns of tree traversal. Only then did I move to the mediums. You should focus on these topics. Arrays and strings, for example, mastering two pointers and sliding window, hash tables, because they optimize so many solutions, binary search, which are not just used for sorted arrays, trees and graphs, for example, BFS and DFS, and dynamic programming, but only after you're solid on recursion. Definitely skip the exotic stuff like segment trees or red black trees, unless you're going for competitive programming roles or quant firms. And as for language, I recommend Python for interviews. I learned Java first and stubbornly stuck with it. Big mistake. Python is a lot less code for the same solution, and less code means fewer bugs and more time to think. In addition to having this leak code knowledge, you're also going to need to practice how you act in both behavioral and technical interviews. For behavioral questions, prepare five to seven stories using the STAR method, situation, task, action, and results. You need stories for things like conflict resolution, leadership, failure, technical challenge, teamwork, and innovation. Definitely dig deep and mine your experiences creatively. For example, that group project where your partner didn't contribute, that's your conflict resolution story. The hackathon where your code broke two hours before submission, that's failure and recovery. That time you helped a classmate understand recursion, that's mentorship and communication. For technical interviews, practice talking while coding. I used to practice solving problems silently and then explain. That is the wrong approach. You should narrate everything. For example, um, I'm thinking, hash 
lookup here because we need 01 lookups. Let me trace through an example to verify that this works. Also, do mock interviews, even if it's just with a non-technical friend. The first time you have to code while someone watches is terrifying, so it's better to experience that with a familiar face than in your Google or Meta interview. You can use things like Pramp for free pure mock interviews if you don't have anyone in real life to practice with. And also learn how to handle pressure. In my first meta interview, I completely froze on a tree problem whose variations I'd solved dozens of times. Why? Honestly, I was just nervous. In order to combat this, start doing time practice. For example, solve problems in 45 minutes max, just like real interviews. Get comfortable being uncomfortable. And no matter how good your interviewing skills are, you still have to get the recruiter to offer you the interview first, and that's when your resume comes into play. My resume used to be terrible. Two columns, colors, irrelevant high school achievements that didn't matter, and honestly, a lot of fluff. But here's what works instead. Use something like Jake's resume template from GitHub or the Harvard MIT resume templates. One column, no graphics, boring fonts like Arial or Calibri. Yes, it may look plain, but that is actually the point. ATS systems can actually read it. Also, structure matters. Put education first with your expected graduation date and GPA if it's above 3.5. Some companies do GPA filters whether we like it or not, and some automatically reject below 3.0. For example, use the XYZ format. So accomplish X as measured by Y by doing Z. So for example, um, reduced API latency by 40% by implementing Redis caching layer to improve user experience. Quantify everything. Don't just say you improve performance, say that you reduce load time from three seconds to 0.8 seconds, impacting 10,000 daily users. Also, remove anything from high school unless it's directly technical. Nobody cares in college about your AP Scholars Awards when you're applying for software engineering internships. Use that space for technical skills instead. For said technical skills, list them clearly. Don't mix Python with Spanish language skills. Have a dedicated technical skills section with languages, frameworks, and tools. And be honest, don't just list every single language you've ever touched. Now let's go over good projects. I'm going to be real. No one cares about your to-do list app or YouTube clone. Those are the new hello world projects. You need something that solves a real problem and demonstrates actual engineering thinking. Here's how you can find project ideas. Look for inefficiencies in your daily life. For example, annoyed by your school's course registration system? Build a better interface for it. Tired of manually checking when professors post grades? Build a scraper that notifies you. Want to trauma dump on someone but have no friends? Build an AI chatbot. The technical complexity matters less than showing that you can identify problems, design solutions, and actually ship or deploy something. For structure, each project on your resume needs the problem it solved, the technologies used, so languages and frameworks, and measurable impact. For example, build React app is weak, but build React-based study scheduler used by 200 students, reducing scheduling conflicts by 60% is strong. Next, let's talk about the application strategy. Honestly, cold applications barely work anymore. The days of just uploading your resume to 50 companies and getting callbacks is over. You need warm connections and strategic timing. First, start local and unknown. That company no one's heard of in your college town? They need interns too, and they get probably 50 applications, not 5,000. My first internship was at a small startup. It was not glamorous, but it got me experience that led me to bigger opportunities. And use the hidden job market. Join your school's Facebook groups, Discord servers, and Slack channels. Upperclassmen might post opportunities. For online applications, the timing is everything. Set up Google Alerts for the company name you're targeting and software engineering intern. You can also use the simplified GitHub repo and check it multiple times a day. Make sure that you apply within three hours of posting. After 24 hours, your resume will be buried underneath hundreds of others. Next, another tip is to get referrals strategically. Don't just cold message people on LinkedIn asking for referrals. Instead, build genuine connections first. You can attend virtual info sessions, ask thoughtful questions, connect with the speakers afterward, and then after building rapport, you can ask about opportunities. I would say to track all your applications in a spreadsheet. For example, list the application date, company, position, where you found it, referral name of applicable, and response date. You'll be applying probably to more than 100 places. You will need this organization to avoid missing follow-ups. And finally, let's talk about the mindset that makes all the difference. Keep in mind that rejection is not just part of the process, it is the process. I, I applied to more than 100 companies my first cycle. 
I got maybe a dozen interviews and converted three to offers. That is a 1.5% success rate and that's actually pretty normal. Don't tie your identity to these outcomes. For example, Google rejected me for an internship three times, but then they hired me full time. These decisions often have nothing to do with your abilities and everything to do with timing, team needs, and honestly, just luck. Your first internship doesn't have to be a thing. Honestly, obsession with big names is pretty toxic. Even though my first internship was at a company that you've never heard of, it gave me the experience to talk about, references to use, and most importantly, the confidence that I belonged in this field. And understand that every interview is practice for the next one. When I bombed my meta interview spectacularly, couldn't figure out memorization and gave them an O3 to the N solution, that failure actually taught me to slow down, ask clarifying questions, and not panic when I don't immediately see the solution. If you're starting from zero, here is your realistic timeline and action plan. In the first two months, learn to code, for example, CS50 and basic Python. In the third and fourth months, focus on data structures and algorithms. In the fifth and sixth months, focus on Leetcode easy problems and medium problems and start building projects. In months seven and eight, write and polish your resume and start applying and interview prepping. If you already know how to code, then you can shorten this significantly. In the first month, do Leetcode 75 and Leetcode 150 if you have time and optimize your resume. In month two, build one project and start networking. In month three, mass apply and also do interview prep. I'm going to say realistically, you're going to need to apply to a minimum of 100 places. Yes, 100. Applying for jobs is a numbers game. You can apply to big tech, medium companies, startups, local companies, and companies you've never heard of. You only need that one yes. In conclusion, keep in mind that landing tech internships is not about being a genius programmer. It's about being strategic, persistent, and prepared. I went from not knowing what a binary tree was to interning at companies I only dream about in the past. The path isn't linear. You'll fail interviews, you'll get ghosted after perfect technical rounds, you'll question if you're good enough. I did all of that. But every rejection taught me something and eventually the acceptances started coming in. And that's all I have for you in this video. If this helped, feel free to hit that like button and subscribe. I share tech career advice every week. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.